Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dr. Coder's Medical Coding Classes. So today I am going to discuss about Chapter 1, Part 3. Okay. Certain Infectious and Parasitic Diseases, Third Part. I have already done and uploaded Chapter uh, 1, Part 1 and Part 2. So if you didn't watch that video means first you watch that and then come to this video. So let's move to the video. So next one is Zika virus infection. Zika virus infection code is A92.5. Okay, here also it is similar to HIV which is already we discussed. Here also code only confirmed cases. Okay, that is if the in the documentation it is mentioned as suspected possible probable means you cannot code a92.5 you have to only code for the signs or symptoms okay you have to code a92.5 only if the condition is confirmed that is the patient is zika virus infected or the zika virus infection is confirmed if such statement is there means we can give a92.5 uh, but if it is a suspected possible or probable means you can you cannot code a92.5 you can code only the signs or symptoms with which he come to hospital uh, and also one more point if the patient is having uh, exposure with the zika virus infected patient and is uh, having contact and suspected exposure means we can give z20.821 okay then next one coronavirus infection a very trending infection currently no so, the code for coronavirus infection is U07.1. Here also the condition is similar to HIV and Zika virus. That is, you have to code only the confirmed cases. Okay. If it is given as suspected coronavirus infection or possible coronavirus infection or probable or inconclusive means you have to code for signs and symptoms. For example, uh, if it is in the documentation, if it is given as patient comes with the cough and shortness of breath, uh, he is suspecting coronavirus infection means you cannot give U07.1. Instead, you have to give codes of shortness of breath and cough. Okay. Then next one, sequencing of codes. Sequence first except in obstetric sepsis or transplant complication. So this obstetrics, sepsis and transplant codes are always have sequencing priority. Other than that case, you have to give U07.1 always as the primary code. Okay. Then next one. Acute respiratory manifestations of COVID-19. So from here onwards, in the coming slide, we are discussing about the respiratory manifestations of COVID-19. So what is respiratory manifestation means the patient with COVID-19 will be having uh, some respiratory condition that occurs due to COVID-19. That is the manifestation conditions of COVID-19. Okay. And if patient comes to hospital for that, manifestation conditions then how you should code okay first you have to code for the covid positive u07.1 then secondly you have to code the respiratory manifestation condition code okay then example first one pneumonia that is the patient is covid positive and the patient is having pneumonia due to covid positive pneumonia is a respiratory manifestation of covid positive covid Okay, then first you have to code for COVID-19 U07.1 and secondly you have to code for pneumonia. Similarly, next one, acute bronchitis which is also a respiratory manifestation of COVID-19. So, the patient is having COVID-19 and the uh, patient is currently having acute bronchitis due to COVID-19. Then firstly you have to code for COVID-19 and secondly code for acute bronchitis J20 point. Okay. Here also all conditions are similar to what we discussed in the previous slide only. All three conditions, lower respiratory infection, acute respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, 
all our respiratory manifestations of COVID-19. Okay, so if the COVID-19 patient is affected with any of these conditions, first you have to code for COVID-19 user 7.1. Secondly, you have to code for that particular respiratory manifestation. If it is respiratory infection, lower respiratory infection, J22. If it is acute respiratory failure, then second code will be J96.0. If it is ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, your second code will be J80. Okay, always code first, U07.1 and secondly, the code for respiratory manifestation. Similar is the case of non-respiratory manifestation also. Okay. So, if patient is having any non-respiratory manifestation due to COVID-19. For example, enteritis. Okay. Then also, first you have to code for U07.1 that is COVID-19. And secondly, what particular non-respiratory manifestation or condition is there that you have to code secondly. Next one is exposure to COVID-19. Exposure to means the patient is having um, exposure or contact with the COVID infected patient, COVID-19 infected patient. Then what you have to code is Z20.828 contacted with and the suspected exposure to other viral communicable diseases. So next one is asymptomatic individual test positive for COVID-19. So, what is asymptomatic and the symptomatic difference? Asymptomatic means no symptoms, without symptoms. Okay, symptomatic means with symptoms. Okay, so uh, in previous case for HIV and all, you know, we have different code for asymptomatic HIV and symptomatic HIV. No, you hope you remember that symptomatic HIV code is B20 and asymptomatic code uh, was Z21. But here in case of COVID-19, you don't have different code. You have same code for both asymptomatic um, COVID-19 as well as symptomatic COVID-19. The code is U07.1. Then next one, personal history of COVID-19. When should you give the code for personal history? Personal history means that the patient was once infected with COVID-19 but now it is resolved. Right. In that case, you have to give this personal history. Okay, patient was infected with COVID-19 in the past, but he doesn't have COVID-19 currently. In that case, you have to give personal history of COVID-19. The code is Z86.19, personal history of other infectious and parasitic diseases. The next one is follow-up after infection has resolved. So, when should you give the follow-up code? Okay, that the patient was once infected with COVID-19 and uh, it is resolved and the patient now comes for a follow-up visit. Okay, then the first code will be Z09 that is encounter for follow-up and the second code should be the personal history code that is Z86.19. Okay, then last one is encounter for antibody testing. What is antibody testing? Antibody testing is that test is used to detect the presence of antibody if in the patient was previously infected with COVID-19. Okay, so if the patient was previously infected with the COVID-19 and we then the antibody testing means the patient that antibody testing will be positive. Okay, so if the patient currently comes for antibody testing means you have to do Code Z01.84 and counter for antibody response examination. Okay, so these are the codes for COVID-19 and related conditions. So that's all about this big chapter. It is done in three parts. If you didn't see part 1 and part 2 means I will share the link here. So thank you. Keep watching my video. If you have any doubt means you can ask in the comment section.